know the drill. Get your Bible out. Get your Bible out. I'll get it. Praise the Lord. Get your Bible out. All right. Get your, get your Bible out. Stand on your feet, please. Stand up. It's all right. You say, well, this isn't Catholic Church. You're right, it's not, but we can still stand. Thank you, Jesus. Lift your Bible up or your phone up or point at the screen if you're watching the screen today. Lord, we thank you for the Word. We thank you for the Word. We thank you for the Word, Lord. We lift it up and we bless you and we praise you and we pray that you teach us today, Jesus, because we need teaching. In the name of Jesus, we pray right now. And you may be seated. All right, there's a lot of stuff I want to say today, and I keep looking at that wa that clock, and it, I got to get that clock set to the right time. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. So Jeff and Ning, would you come up real quick? Jeff and Ning, come on up here. Um, while they're coming up, we got this in the mail. Did, did anybody get one of these? These Meyer, my y'all listening? I know we got a clog back there with the kids, right? We'll just wait a minute. I don't know what the, probably everybody getting down the steps. This is wonderful. Hey, while they're going, come on up here. Have a seat because it's going to be a minute. I want to wait till some of these people come back before we start talking about that. Um, we did trunk or treat on Thursday night. And as you all know, um, Tammy and I never took our kids out trick or treating. We never, we, we don't believe that the Halloween message is a good message. And we don't want anything to do with it. But, um, <clears throat> And as a kid, um, when my mom and dad got saved, they, we, we ceased going out trick-or-treating. Okay, we stopped it. And some of you may be like, oh, give me, like, just shh, 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 quiet yourself. So anyway, last year we were talking about maybe we should have done something last year to, um, you know, reach out to our community. But there was just so many restrictions and stuff going on. We're just like, uh, and we didn't have time, we thought, whatever. So we didn't do anything. Well, this year we did. And we did Bible Treasures Trunk or Treat. And we, Tammy and I went and bought a bunch of food at GFS uh, Thursday morning. We bought 200 hot dogs, okay? It, it, this is the hot dog eatingest bunch I've ever seen in my life. We gave out 125 hot dogs. Yes. We bought... We gave out about probably 75 bags of chips. And get this, verse man, stand up. Zach, stand up. This, so turn around so they can see your face. This, I know you're not supposed to point out superheroes, but Zach, if you, if you look at the pictures on Facebook, Zach played uh, verse man. And verse man, I don't know if he realized this, I told him, but Tammy told me he gave out 43 Bibles Thursday night. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Woo! Uh, for kids, they were kids' Bibles, but that was an amazing, amazing thing. I don't think all of our people, at least I hope not, ate all those hot dogs, but we had people standing in line for hot dogs, and I'm thinking, you've got to be, I'm not a hot dog person, okay? They, well, and I have to admit, you all bought those hot dogs because I decided that I'm, if I'm going to eat a hot dog, I'm not eating just a hot dog. And then I didn't eat a hot dog at all. So we got Angus beef hot dogs. So they were all week. They, and we got coney sauce because if I'm going to eat a hot dog, it's got to have coney sauce, but I didn't eat one. Anyway, so I, it was just an amazing, amazing time. I'm guessing we had close to 200 people come, and between our people and all the people that came through. That was an amazing outreach. You know what? We, and we, it was about Jesus. Just, you know, there, it wasn't about Halloween or all that stuff. It was about just reaching out. And I think, I don't know if anybody was here or saw the pictures on Facebook, but I think maybe the Beavers won. If we, if we had a competition, wow. They showed up and they were like, get out of our way, get out of our way. We're going to do this thing, you know. And their whole truck looked like, what was it, Noah's Ark. They even had the dogs. I saw this on the, I didn't even notice when we, when we were here. I was the hot dog runner, okay. I was busy, like, resupplying hot dogs. But they even had their dogs dressed up as lions. I mean, give me a break. Who does it? Oh, there we go. Where's the picture? Oh, there's some pictures of what it looked. There you go. Look at this. Listen. 
don't mess with the beavers when it comes to, uh, uh, you know, uh, dress-up stuff. Okay, one last thing before I, I talk to, I'm actually going to preach, but this is important stuff. Because, you know, we do want to reach out to our people all around us, and I'm going to talk about that more too. And I wore the wrong shirt. I'm probably sweating through, so you have to get over that. Um, so did anybody get one of these this week? Meyer, it's a Meyer gift catalog, okay? And under, you know where Myers is, right up the street, and I think they're in Columbus too. So um, it says believe under their name, okay? And I'm, I'm going to, come here, Tam, Tammy, stand up here. So my wife is the original Christmas queen, all right? If you come to our house, it will be, I will say over-decorated for Christmas, but... Um, decorating the Christmas tree at my house consists of, since the kids have grown and gone, um, I get the tree up, and then I get all the ornaments out, and then she lays them all out, and then I sit in the chair, eat uh, popcorn and chocolate chip cookies, and she, and she says, aren't you going to help at all? I'm like, I am helping. I'm watching. I'm eating this popcorn. I'm with you right now. This is all ambiance and family. If it's cold, we turn on the fireplace. We have a gas fireplace. And it's all good, right? So, um, I, But I am a, I'm the kind of person that I'm always you know, preaching to her about what Christmas really is and what it should be about, right? And this just kind of <coughs> stuck in my crawl. You know, Meyer, believe, please believe and buy all these things, okay? Yeah. Buy these things and believe, right? Well, I'm, I, I don't want to burst your Christmas bubble, but I may as well do it on Halloween than I do on Christmas. But I just want to say this. I brought this up to Tammy the other day, and it got a very, come up here, Tammy. Uh, I, I, want you to, I want you to see, it got a very cool reception, Okay. And that is, I said, hey, let's do Christmas giving a little different this year. And I said, let's each of us, um, our kids and our grandsons, let's just put one, sorry, I'm pulling your hair, put one name in a pot. And there's, you know, the, I don't even know how many of us there are now, but uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's ten of us. Um, let's put our name in a pot, and then we just get one thing for each other. From what, whoever, whosever name I get, I'll get one thing from that person, but it has to be from a secondhand store or a thrift store. Which, but we, we, um, the shirt I wore last Sunday, I got at Salvation Army two, a couple of weeks ago. And so I, so what did you say? No, I want to get presents for everybody. Okay, sit down, sit down. <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm working on it. The next phase of this is to go to the family and try to create support from them. But if they want to get lots of presents, I just feel like we need to think differently about Christmas. And not that we shouldn't give because we can, I mean, it, just the gift of Jesus Christ is so important. But I want to keep putting that into you as we go on. We're going to put a Christmas tree out in the foyer, which... You know, we have a Christmas tree at our house. I, I pretty much banned Christmas trees at the church um, for uh, quite a while because I didn't want them. We didn't have room at the old location, but here we have a little more room. We did have one up in the foyer last last year, up in the balcony last year. But this year, she – come up here, Tammy, one more time. So the other day, she, um, I asked Jerry Waits, who's sitting right there. He's the director of the foundation shelters over here. And I asked Jerry a couple, maybe a month ago, Jerry, what could we do as a church to help people who are homeless and struggling? And he said, well, what we could really use is um, socks, coat, or socks, hats, and gloves. And um, Tammy came to me, was it last week, and said, hey, I thought of a great idea what we could do for... Um, to, we could do a tree in the lobby, and we could have people bring hats and gloves and socks, and we could decorate the tree with, and underwear, I'm sorry, underwear, please no used underwear, you know, but um, I was looking at the underwear at Salvation Army, the other, because I need some new underwear, just in case you want to know that. I was looking, I was looking through the racks of underwear, and I thought, some of this stuff looks really nice, and then I got to one, I'm like, oh, that looks used. I'm not, no, no underwear. Um, but anyway, so then she said, and I know what we could do. We could take our, our old tree 
and we could bring it to church, and I could get this new tree that I want. I'm like, <laughs> sit down, sit down, so I know how this goes, see. Oh, but we are going to do that. So if you would like to, uh, you know, get socks or underwear or gloves or hats, um, we're uh, here probably maybe just before Thanksgiving. We'll get that tree up out there. I'm real excited to get it out of my house forever. But um, we, we will have to get a new one. But anyway, um, that's, that's another thing coming up. And another opportunity for us to give meaningfully in our own county, our own town, okay? So I brought these folks up here because in 13 days, we're going to have our relationship dinner, workshop dinner, and we're very excited about that. We've got about 42, I think, people signed up for that. We still have plenty of room. Um, but each week for the last seven weeks, we've had a podcast come out on Sunday morning. So if you haven't watched, I'm sorry, listened to those podcasts, you really need to do that because it will enrich your relationship. Hopefully, it will get you thinking about what am I doing in my relationship to really build my relationship. But the reason I wanted them to come up is just to talk real briefly. You can stand up now. Um, is to just say, why should someone listen to this podcast this series, this podcast series, and why should they think about coming to the dinner? It's $35 for couples, and it's $20 for singles. We've actually had somebody donate um, a, a spot for a couple, $35, and we had someone donate a spot for a single, $20. So if you can't afford to come, then let us know, let Tammy know, and uh, we've got that. And if, even if you can't, we, we want people to participate in this because we want to enrich marriage, marriages, relationships, um, just thinking about who should I be with, what should I, what should I be doing in my relationship with another person, okay? And they were the ones that put this idea in my head months and months and months and months ago, and it takes me time to, to get things rolling. But we've been filming. We, had, we were recording this in the summer. And it's just come out um, this in October and November. So we're excited that we get to do this as a body to help people enrich their relationships. And it's not junk. This is quality stuff. So why don't you guys just tell briefly why you think someone should come? So <clears throat> who here has ever had a relationship go sour? Oh, too many to count. <laughs> who, here, who here has had more than one significant relationship go sour? Okay, so we got a majority here. So, yes, you know, from the experiences that we've had, you know, we testify to that. And thank God he's shown us a lot. We've learned a lot, and we're still learning, and we need to learn together. Um, I think, though, that as God is the author of relationships, think about in the beginning, God, in the, and God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So there's relationship on the first day of creation. So not only is it, you know, God the author of that, but he's the, the designer and he's the one that knows to be truly, to fulfill the essence of life, you need to be in relationships and healthy relationships. So how much more should we not in the church be the first to teach and share and discuss and grieve, if you will, together over relationships gone sour and, and having new beginnings, second chances, and to learn from the author of relationships how to go about it in a healthy manner in, in the next go-round. And then the fruit and the fulfillment of that joy that comes forth. And, I, you know, as I look at my spouse here, you know, she always makes me smile just looking at her. So I know the embodiment of, of fulfilled, healthy relationships. So... Praise the Lord. So we want to do this. It's incumbent upon the church to be the leaders in relationship education. Praise the Lord. And usually it is just really some small, simple things that can make so much of a difference. And from my previous experience, it was like I just didn't know. You know, I wanted things to be going really well with our relationship, but I just didn't know exactly how to do it. So it's some of the things that we're going to talk about in the workshop Really simple, free things that you can do. Wherever your relationship is at, it will go a level up higher or maybe even several levels higher. So it's definitely doable. And, you know, just come and some simple tips and tricks that would really do the thing. And it's all scripturally and biblically based, but very practical. 
The Lord, praise the Lord. Thank you, thank you. And we're excited. We're excited. We've never done this in 33 years. We've never done this. And so I'm going to put this up here. If someone, if you want to sign up, we just need your money and commitment by next Sunday because I have to order the food, okay? It's going to be catered, by the way. We're not going to have it. We're not asking anybody to bring anything but yourself and to listen to those podcasts because it will give you some sense of where we're going, okay? We're going to talk more about this next. Yes, sir. How do you podcast? Tiffany will show you later. I can't, I, it's, I don't want to tell you now, but it's simple. It's very simple. So, um, any, I'm sorry. It's a Saturday. It's a Saturday. It starts at 4. Is it up there? Yeah, it starts at 4. And, well, not the actual. Uh, yeah, it starts at 4 and I think ends at 7. It sounds like a long time, but part of that's registration. Part of that's eating. And we're, gonna, we're planning a very exciting time. Oh, plus you get a book out of that too, The Love Dare. So um, that's really, really awesome. Praise God. I'm excited about this. We want you to participate. This is singles. This is dating. This is divorce. This is widowed. This is married. Yes, sir. Uh, Molly Moyer, who a uh, delish us catering on uh, Main Street. We've used her before for Christmas things and her food is amazing. It's chicken, red potatoes, her amazing bacon and butter baked beans, which are, I could just eat those, and um, uh, cake, four different kinds of cake. So we're excited about that, that we're gonna be able to, and, and we say, oh, I don't need that, I don't need that, I don't need that, sure you don't. Yeah, whatever you want, whatever you say. Um, we all need more than we think we do. So let me, let, let's just pray for a second. That was a lot of stuff, and I want to get into the Word. Father, I thank you for the Word today, that it will be impactful and influence the lives of the people sitting in this room and on YouTube today in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And let me say this. Please share today's message, if you will, on Facebook. If you have Facebook, please share it, because I think this is important. Um, so I've had a crazy week this week, okay? Um, uh, Diana's uh, mother's passing uh, will be my fourth funeral in less than 30 days, okay? So, and I'm going to be doing another one, I think, in the next uh, probably a couple weeks. So this week, a gentleman that I've known probably for eight years um, committed suicide, and I met him at the jail, and it was an unfortunate situation that he made that decision. And I, I wish he would have reached out to me and said, I'm, I'm thinking about doing something to myself. But this is really um, the world in which we live, and I think we have to understand that. Um, on Friday morning, I got a phone call from the chaplain at the hospital, and he asked me to come and to uh, console a family that I know. I've met this gentleman eight years ago uh, in jail, and he um, overdosed and died uh, Thursday, no, Friday morning. Yeah, Friday morning. So I was there with them, with her and his mother and stepfather for about an hour and a half. And I, I went with them in to see his body after the hospital folks were all finished, um, you know, doing what they do. And it was, as I drove over to the hospital, I want to say these things don't affect me, but they do affect me. And as I drove over to the hospital, I issued my complaint to the Lord. I said, Lord, why do you want me to do this? Why? Why me? Why am I the person that you've chosen uh, to do this ministry? Because, I, Lord, I don't want to do another overdose or another suicide or I don't want to do it, God. It's it hurts. When, it, when you know those people, it hurts. And so I, as I was driving down Columbus Street, I was like, okay, God, I get it. You know, you, I heard nothing from his throne, but I just kept driving. And I, so I said this to him. I said, Lord, put steel into my heart. Make me steel so that I can be strong and help the folks that you put before me. I'm not saying make me not vulnerable, but just make me tough. Make me really tough spiritually um, Friday afternoon. So that was Friday morning. Friday afternoon, I presided over Ray's grandson's funeral. He overdosed and died last week. 
So you talk about shifting gears. There was no time on Friday to shift gears, right? No time. And when I when I uh, was I, w I was talking to the chaplain at the hospital, and I'm like, "Whew! Wow, today uh, today's going to be an interesting day. You know, I'm going to be busy today." And uh, you know, and especially that was after Thursday night. I mean. You know, we got home at 10 till 9 on Thursday. I was sitting in the chair at 10 till 9 at Thursday night. I, I wasn't even drinking a cup of coffee. I think I was just drinking a glass of water. And um, I said to Tammy, I said, wow, this is really cool. We're home at 10 till 9. And we look what, look what you all did on Thursday night to reach out. We, Tammy and I personally talked to six families from this neighborhood. Isn't that amazing? I mean, six families. If just one person, I don't know who it was. I think it was Jennifer said if just one person, maybe, I don't know, maybe it wasn't Jennifer, somebody said if just one person receives something from this, then it is worthwhile. You know, our effort, do you know, do you know I believe that God will move heaven and earth and you for one person just to move you from where you are to over here so that you can talk to somebody and bring them hope. I think that's why he's put us here. You know, we're not the biggest church in Lancaster, and we're not the prettiest. I mean, I don't mean that the way it might sound, but I'm just kidding. And I'd really I'd freak you out if I just took these completely off, which I do feel better, yes. But you know what? I mean, God can use us. He can use us. And I was thinking about this all week. I, I knew. I'll tell you what. I've, I've uh, all this whole week, I've struggled to stay out of stress just because I knew what, I knew Thursday, we've got this thing going on Thursday, and I, you know me, I like things to go well. I want things to go well. I want us as a body to do things with, with excellence when it comes to doing this. Everything else I don't care about, but when it comes to this, let's do it with excellence and, and with um, sincerity and with no religion or judgment. You know, we can... We, we can uh, try to figure out what we think about somebody's situation all we want, but in the bottom line, it doesn't mean a hill of, hill of beans difference. What you think, it's what God thinks. And, you know, I thought, my goodness, of all the people this young lady could call, she told the chaplain at the hospital, please call Pastor Tom. I did their wedding in January, by the way. Yeah, right here in this church, first, maybe the second wedding in this church. And I thought, oh, God, I was mad. I was really mad. But I thought, Lord, I thank you that I got to be there. It's hard looking at a dead body that was just living about four or five hours before. Still, you know, not looking like death. And you think, wow, I, I just, I, all day long, and then, you know, went to, to uh, Ray's grandson's funeral, and I'm thinking, this is really serious stuff, what we're doing. You think this is just coming, well, you know, I, I think I'm going to go to church today, you know. Pfft. Yeah, right. And for somebody else, this is life and death. And you want to be casual. Come on. We can't be that way. We can't be that way. Somebody that you know is desperate to hear the truth. And you don't even know who it is. I, I mean, pff, these two guys, I would never have guessed. Not in a bazillion years. I thought, man, you got to be kidding me. This guy committed suicide? Oh, wow. Never, never, ever, ever would thought of, never would have thought of that person doing that. Acts 28. I'm going to read some. Acts 28, 22. I, I was so, did you guys, did you guys have a great time last Sunday with Malcolm? Is, I mean, should, I mean, do you think we should bring him back again? Oh, my goodness. Um, I, yeah, I really am envious of him because here I am still using paper, and he's an older man than me, and, and he was using an iPad. I'm thinking, man, I wish I could do that. I've got a tablet. I just, I can't get into the whole thing. I'm just... Um, but we want to hear what you believe. 
for the only thing we know about this movement is that it is denounced everywhere. Do you know your, and you, some people are going to look at this message and they're going to say, hey, didn't he just preach this like back in August? Similar. I went back to my notes. Yeah, something similar. But I, I kind of complained to the Lord about that. I said, Lord, you know, he said, just they need, they need to hear it again, Tom. You need to hear it again. Um, everything we know, the only thing we know about this movement is that it is denounced everywhere. Th this movement, what, what we believe here in this place was denounced everywhere. Does anybody feel like that's happening today? It's going to get worse. Uh, let, let it be known that it was said here, it's going to get worse. They might even call us up to tribunals and trials and say, this person calls himself a Christian. He's one of those people. Oh, we've, we've got, we've got uh, punishments for people like that. It's denounced everywhere. 23. So a time was set, and on that day, a large number of people came to Paul's lodging. Now, what do you think about that? This message is denounced everywhere, and a large number of people showed up. Somebody had to be talking. Somebody had to be saying something to family members and friends and say, hey, Paul's here. Let's go listen to him. Let's go listen to what he's got to say. Let's go find out what this thing's all about. Do you know people are looking for the answer everywhere? They're looking for it in their arms, in their noses, through their mouth, through the beverage. They're looking for answers everywhere. And we, we just want to dismiss them. Oh, that's a drug addict. Oh, that's an alcoholic. Or that he, he's, just a, he's just a womanizer. She's just a slut. You know what I'm talking about? Aren't you glad you came to church today? Gee. He explained and testified about the kingdom of God and tried to persuade them about Jesus from the scriptures. We talked about that a few months ago, didn't we? What, about the word, of God? not a few months ago, maybe just a few weeks ago. Using the law of Moses and the books of the prophets, and he spoke to them from morning until evening. From morning until evening. Are you guys ready to stay all day? Oh, no, Pastor Tom, I got, I got to eat. You guys better be glad that I am on a three times a day eating schedule. <laughs> I'm probably worse than some of those babies that were up here. Some were persuaded by the things he said, um, but others did not believe. Jeff, there's a word I'm looking for because I'm calling my message this today, convinced. So if you look, that, look for that, it might be King James or New King James, I don't know. I didn't look that up when I was, some were persuaded, but the, the translation that I read this morning said convinced. Some were convinced by the things he said. Persuaded is good too, but others did not believe. And I, I thought about that, and I wrote this down. Why do some believe and others don't? Why do some people believe? And others say, I got this. My solution is death. My solution is, is to shoot this up in my arm. My solution is to snort this through my nose. My solution is to find another woman and sleep with her. Or find another woman and sleep with her. Or my solution is find a man who can take I mean, what? Why do some people believe and others don't? This has like been my, well, yeah, oh, amplify. And some were convinced and believed what he said, and others did not believe. I was just enthralled by that word, convinced. And what, what did it take for those, all those people that came to listen to Paul? Somebody told, I mean, people, there said a bunch of people came. A bunch of people came and said, hey, you need to come and listen to this. You need to come and listen to this guy. There's just something about what he says. There's just something about it. Oh, I mean, I'm, I pu I'm putting that question, I'm going to give just a few minutes for some feedback here, but, um, and remember how this goes, if I don't agree with you, I'll tell you. So, um, why were some, why are some believers and some don't believe? I think, let me ask this question. How many of you were some of those people that were not convinced? Raise your hand if you were not convinced. So, Connor, Why? 
Come, wait, come up here. Come up here. Hey, can I have another microphone? I'm sorry. I should have asked. Where could I get another one? I, 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 is there one up there that's good? Oh, and I got my ankle socks on too. What do you think? <laughs> Which one, uh, Ryan? One? BGV one. Sorry. I, I'm, I'm always doing this. I'm too spontaneous. All right. Why? Why were you not convinced? Oh, is it on? Go back, go back in. Listen. Can you hear me now? Yeah. <laughs> um, I wasn't convinced because I didn't want to. I didn't want to hear it. I was. I was comfortable doing what I was doing. I was okay with living the life that I was living, and I didn't. I didn't. I didn't want to give that up because I was. It was unknown. Listening to the truth. <clears throat> So, so the impact of the truth in your life was an unknown to you, and you thought you were going to have to give something up. Exactly. Do, do you do all hear him? And so some of you, was any, raise your hands again if you say you were not convinced. Yeah, there's a few folks in here. So what do you think? Anybody, anybody have any, what? Thoughts? They're just quiet. All right, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Just a second. What? Wait a minute. Where's Sheila? Because she'd say young and dumb. Yeah, young and dumb. Yeah. I really didn't care about hearing about uh, Jesus, and especially when I was in the service. I could have cared less. Had p many people preach to me, and I just ignored it. And, and now, 1993, I was convinced. You're not young and dumb anymore. Exactly. I believe the truth is here. <laughs> Yes, Lucy. Wait, why not, Andy? you got to use my friend so people at home can hear. I was convinced at a very young age, but my children and their friends and other people that I know, it's peer pressure. They say, oh, your parents take you to church? Ooh, you know, and they, they just don't want to be different. Right. Right. So that that is um, yes. Peer peer pressure keeps people from coming to the truth or seeking out help. What are you going to say, Jerry? I just wanted to say that there were times when I was weak because I felt like this is too good to be true. And I say this because whenever we get the opportunity to tell people. It is true. I know it seems too good to be true, but taste and see. Taste and see. Just a second. Uh, Jamie, why, why were you not convinced? That's the, end. That's the question. Why were you not? No, stand up here. Get up here. So, uh, 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 over, over here. Why were you not convinced? Um, I guess. Hold up to your mouth. I guess I, I remember I kept telling myself when I was growing up that I didn't. I didn't get it or that it wasn't for me or I didn't understand it. And um, now I know, you know, a lie treat, a lie believed as the truth is treated as the truth, you know. And I remember I, I grew up with this girl and she was just as rebellious as the rest of us and maybe even more. And she left for a summer and she went to some kind of Bible camp and she came home and she was so different and I, I only had to been like 11 and I remember thinking I want to be like that and then feeling like oh no that's not for me that won't happen for me <laughs> at 11 years old at 11 years old the enemy is trying hard to capture the young and to, to tear them away so that they'll believe that lie all their lives. And I'm thinking, thank God, here you are. You know what? We don't have to believe Satan's lies. We don't have to believe what he says. And I, th I think about these two men this week, three, three men, uh, um, uh, Ray's grandson. You know, how many more people uh, do we know out there in the world who are going to take those steps? I'm going to take two more people. Chad, come up here. And sir, I don't know your name. Come up here. Come up here. Um, Chad, why weren't you convinced? 
This might, right sound, up to your mouth. this might sound real bad, but uh, the truth is, churches uh, that I'd went to, I was lied to so much when I was younger by certain denominations that were fighting with each other over a couple of little words that disagreed over, and uh, I was just lied to, I feel like, and... I had a hard time going certain places because I knew better because at a young age I was showed certain things. Though I didn't walk that way, I knew better. Religion, when I said churches, I know where church is, but religion kept me. It took God himself doing a miracle on me to believe in them and see them everywhere. That's what kept me from it. Praise the Lord. And, you know, that's that's sad that we will allow all this stuff to keep us away from the beauty. So what's your name, sir? Let's hold Joe. that. I'm sorry? Joe. Joe. I did 12 years inner city ministry to the youth. And uh, I did 12 years of inner city ministry to the youth around urban Columbus. And uh, the truth being the truth is the hardest thing to swallow. Um, but it's diligence and it's submitting that breaks through that truth. And uh, I've been out of it for quite a few years. I've had a rocky road with my belief. I'm here now, and uh, God just said I should say something. So that's what gets me through, and that's what, that's how I am falling back into it, is digging my heels in and saying, hey, I want a better life for my kids and a better life for other people. Amen. Thank you, sir. Praise the Lord. Um. I want to read some more scripture. We're not done with this conversation. Where, where are we at? 24. And some were convinced and believed what he said, and others did not believe. Some were convinced. I got saved when I was 10 years old. We went to the Methodist Church, Shalom United Methodist Church in Carroll, but it was when it was in actually downtown Carroll, if you know where that's like. Um, and it was, um, I knew Jesus had come into my heart. It was at my home, in bed. I asked, ask, I asked, I asked Jesus to come into my heart. And my life was changed. It was totally changed. Now, I'm not perfect, but he began this process of bringing me to where I am today. I don't fully understand that, but I thank God for that. I was convinced, though, that he is who he says he is, the Son of God and the Savior of all mankind. Verse 25, and as they disagreed among themselves, they began to leave. But not before Paul had added one statement more. The Holy Spirit was right in saying through Isaiah the prophet to your forefathers, go to this people and say to them, you will indeed hear and hear with your ears but will not understand. And you will indeed look and look with your eyes but will not see, not perceive, have knowledge of or become acquainted with what you look at at all. For the heart of this people has grown dull, stupid, hardened, and calloused. I want to read that again. This is what happens to people. They, they become um, a dull, stupid, hardened, and calloused. Think about that. Don't let that happen to you. And their ears are heavy and hard of hearing, and they have shut tight their eyes so that they may not perceive and have knowledge and become acquainted with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their souls and turn to me and be converted that I may heal them. Do you know God wants to heal you? Every part of your life, not just um, your physical body. He wants to heal your mind. He wants to heal your spirit. He wants to heal your finances, your relationships, everything. 28. So let it be understood by you then that this message of the salvation of God has been sent to the Gentiles. That's us. And they will listen. That's what Paul said. He was talking to Jewish people. And he said, listen, the the Gentiles, they're going to pick up this message and they're going to receive it and they're going to live it out. And here we are today. Thousands of miles from Jerusalem, here we are today. Is that the last verse in that? No, one more. Okay. And when he'd said these things, the Jews went away, arguing and disputing among themselves. Dear God in heaven. Isn't that just just like Chad said? 
religion. Some people want to hold on to it. Some people want to grab hold of it. And they don't want to let it go because it is, who they, it is what they say it is. So I wanted to illustrate that today. Years ago, Tammy bought me this shirt. Looks good, doesn't it? But this is a nice shirt, actually. Years ago, come here, Tammy. Oh, my gosh. I wish it, we need a camera. I know Trent's not here today. We need a camera up here that can be trained on her face that's up on that screen so you can see all the looks I get when I ask her to come up here. Hold, so, and she's, I'm going to give her this microphone, and she's going to have something to say about this. But don't say anything. Let me preach this out, okay? Tammy, are you, do you promise? It was uh, from the kids. It was from the kids for Father's Day, I think. Christmas. Yes. Okay, so I've had this shirt for a long time. Don't leave. I love you being up here. She's beautiful. She makes me look really good, doesn't she? Mm hmm. Um, so she got, they got this for me for Christmas years ago. And at first it was real, you know, plush and looked real nice and everything. And I, so then after a while it got a little bit of a rip and I'm like, oh no, not this shirt. I like this. So then I just started wearing it in the mornings when I got up and, and you know, so does somebody want to come up and put it on? I mean, I usually don't have a shirt on when I wear it. So, and it's not been washed for about a month. But, so it's, it's probably sweaty and dirty and needs washed, but I kind of figure, what's the point? <laughs> you know, it's just going to get worse and worse the more I put it in the washing machine. But you can sit down if you want to. Um, I thought this shirt perfectly illustrated um, how we can be with things that we believe. You know, I don't want to get rid of this shirt. She has said to me on multiple occasions throw it away. There was a shirt that I had a long time ago, and I love that shirt. It was ripped. It had holes in it. I wore it on Saturday mornings. Does anybody know what I'm talking about in here? Does anybody have a shirt or a pair of pants or a pair of shorts like what I'm talking about? And she's with that other shirt. One day, I noticed, where is, where is my shirt? She, and all I thought, I cannot believe she threw my shirt away. That is a violation. That is like, we need to talk about that next, on the 13th. Violating the trust of your spouse or your significant other. I felt so violated the day I realized she threw that shirt away. That woman, she needs to listen to me. But anyway, so I learned my lesson, right? I hide it. I want you to think about this in terms of how we are as human beings and, and what we believe and what we want to hold on to. Do you know what I do? I thought, well, if I hang this up and she sees it, she'll grab it and she'll put it away. So I do this. I put it in a ball. And I put it up in the closet out of the way where she can't see it and throw my shirt away. Because she'll, she'll throw it away. I don't tell her. I don't tell her where it's at. She knows. But, I mean, think about this. This thing is a rag, and I probably need to throw it away and adopt a new shirt that isn't. What? Oh, I can't use that as my morning shirt. That's got to be a different shirt that is allocated to that purpose. I have a very regimented life, okay? So, anyway, it probably needs to go in the trash, and it probably will at some point in time because I am developing less of an attachment to it. But this is exactly what we do with our sin, isn't it? We do this. I can't get rid of this because I, I, I love this. I need this. You know, but, but that's, I think, a reason why we don't, we aren't convinced. Just like Connor said, I'm going to have to give something up if I come to Jesus, right? I'm going to have to give something up. I want to read another scripture um, John 14, 1 through 6. We're going to read that. Don't let your heart be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. That seems hard for somebody who doesn't know Jesus. But for us who've been here for a while, we're like, yeah, I can trust God. He's never let me down. I can trust him. Uh, verse 2. <clears throat> 
There's more than enough room in my father's home. If this were not so, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? You know, every time we go to a store, Tammy's, and she'll say, what? Oh, do you like any of these shirts? That's a really nice shirt. I'm like, yeah, I do, but I don't need any more. And I know what she's thinking. She's trying to bait me towards the trash can. She's trying to get me to throw this away. And, and don't you think that's what some people think when you're telling them about Jesus? Oh, here we go again. Here we go again. They're giving me the Jesus story, right? There's enough room, guys. If this were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? God's got something better for us than our old, raggedy, messed up, torn up selves. 13, uh, two, three. When everything is ready, I'll come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am. Verse 4. And you know the way to where I am going. Okay, you know the way to where I'm going. No, we don't, Lord, Thomas said. We have no idea where you're going. So how can we know the way? How can we know the way? I mean, here we go. This is Thomas, right? He's just, he, he's like, well, we don't know where you're going. We don't know what's happening. You know what that is? That's being dull, spiritually dull. You know, we can walk in this building once a week. We can watch truth talks. We can come to Bible study. You can do all sorts of things and still walk out of this place completely and totally dull and stupid and not knowing anything if you don't have a relationship with Jesus outside of here. And you will be nothing. You won't, you won't help anybody. Get out of yourself. People that you know need what you've got, and they are depending on you to get stronger, to know more, to know how to use what it is God has given to you. Verse 6, Jesus told them, and this is where a lot of people that don't know Jesus get tripped up. I am the way the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. Do you know this is your message? This is your message right here. Jesus is the way. Somebody says, I don't know what to do. Jesus is the way. I, you know, I, I thought about this yesterday. I'm sorry, not yesterday. Um, Thursday night, I got to talk with several people right out there on the street. I'm telling you, somebody walked right up to me. It can't get any easier than this. You say, oh, well, it's trick or treat, tr uh, trunk or treat. I had to get over that, and it was hard. Do you know why? I don't, I'm, Chad, uh, Chad, or Chad said it. I wanted to hang on to what uh, my personal views about Halloween. I, it's, it's a devil's holiday. But you know what? It was like I had to get enlightened in something. Well, maybe somebody will walk on the parking lot that needs Jesus. There was a man walking down the street. His family was already here. I, would, I was just standing out there. I think I'd just done a hot dog run or something, or I was pouring cider for people, making very bad jokes about, hey, here's some cider, <laughs> you know. And it's like he walked right up to me and <laughs> told me everything that was going on in his life right now. And he needs Jesus. <laughs> you know what I mean? He needs Jesus. And I thought, whoa, whoa. I mean, I, I was convinced right then, Tom Underwood, this isn't about you, buddy. This is about the people that are going to walk in. They're, they're going to say, hey, what's going on down there at that place? Yeah, we need to try to get all the people we can to come to church. That's not what it's about. It's about Jesus. It's about people coming to the truth. I don't care what. One, two, three. Full pews, missing, you know, missing bodies. That doesn't really bother me. What bothers me is if we're not open to sharing Jesus Christ with people that really need it. And then Tammy, and then I got to talk to another family um, that I, I know these folks. And I was just like, when I saw them, I'm like, God, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I can be so wrong about some things. Forgive me, God. 
And then, you know, what the devil tries to do, someone, someone said it, I think, earlier. The, the enemy tries to get you for all, oh, yeah, see, you should have been doing this for years, huh? Yeah, so you're, you're so wonderful. I'm like, no, I can't do anything about those lost years, but I can do, about what, do something about what we're doing right now. I can do something about it. And I thought, wow, God, you're so good to us. You're so good to us that we got to stand in front of people on Thursday night in the pouring down rain. And do you know what? We, we deliberated about that all week. Should we cancel? Should we cancel? Should we cancel? We held it off till Tuesday, and we're like, no, we're not going to do it. If it rains, it rains. We're just going to keep doing it. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. And 125 hot dogs later, here we are, you know. <laughs> but thank you, Jesus. What's next? What's next? You know, uh, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. That's the message that we have. And, you know, well, now, Pastor Tom, I'm real careful. I don't want to turn people off. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, so you're going to control God's message, are you? You're going to decide what God's message is to, to, uh, to people that are dying in the pit. You're going to decide that. Guess what? He's going to move you out of the way. And find somebody who will speak the message because that message will get people saved. Whether you think it will or not, oh, well, that's going to cause people to walk away. You don't know what they're thinking when they go home at night and lay their head down on the pillow, and they're like, oh, my God. When the Spirit of God uses his word to get into their heart, yeah. and you're like, whoa, that's God. That's not you. You just spoke the scripture. Hey, Jesus said he's the way, the truth, and the life, and nothing that you do will work except him. As soon as you get that, you know what? Do you know what occurred to me when I first started doing jail ministry? I've told this before over and over and over again. And I was, the first night I realized it, it was the old Wheeling Street Jail, and I had been there for a Bible study, and some of the men had told me some things that had happened in their lives. And I sat there in that circle, and I was overwhelmed. And it was like, this is what I felt. Oh, my God, I'm in the wrong place. I shouldn't even be here. I can't do this. I'm the wrong person for this. I'm the wrong person. God, you, you, I got in the car. I was instantly in tears. I'm like, God, you chose the wrong man. I can't do this. These guys have problems way bigger than me. I can't fix them. And my father, being who he is, he said, you're absolutely right, Tom. You can't fix them, but I can. And he said, the only thing you are is a sign. Hey, there's Jesus. There's Jesus. There's Jesus. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. You mean I'm just a, a sign, like a, like a dumb old metal sign with something printed on the front that says, one way, one, what, there's a song about that. One way, Jesus. Go look it up. There's a song for that. And it's like, hey, I'm just the sign that says, hey, there's Jesus. There's Jesus. There's Jesus. There's Jesus. Right there. And you know what? That freed me up. I said, you know what, God? I can do that all day. I can do that all day long. Hey, there's Jesus Christ. He loves you. He loves you. Your life is, yes, it took pressure off of me. It took pressure off because I knew he's the one doing the saving, not me. I can't save anybody. I can't save myself. But he can save. Can you guys just take um, a couple more verses? James 2, 19. You know, I hear this sometimes. Well, I believe in God. I believe there's a God. I believe in God. That's not enough. That's not enough. You better tell people that's not enough. Look, give this, give this one to them. You say you have faith for you believe that there is one God. Good for you. Even the demons believe this, and they tremble in terror. People say, oh, yeah, I believe in God. You know the people I'm talking about, the ones that aren't convinced. They believe he's way out there, and I'm way over here just doing my thing. He can just leave me alone, and I'll leave him alone. Are you on, do you understand what I'm talking about? You're being pretty quiet. 20. <clears throat> How foolish. Can't you see that faith without good deeds is useless? A good deed is saying, Jesus, I need your help. Right there. Jesus, I need your help. Come into my life and be Lord of my life. Um, I want to 
Matthew 7, I'm just going to read a, a few of these verses. Matthew 7, 13. Um, You can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. <clears throat> and I think it's interesting, the conversation that we're having today, because you may say, well, Pastor Tom, we sure are making this exclusive. Absolutely not. We're throwing the doors wide open and saying, hey, anyone can come in, but you have to come in. Right? You have to come in. You can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad, is it not? And his gate is uh, wide for the many who choose that way. But the gateway to life is very narrow and the road is difficult and only a few ever find it. Why don't, and this is, goes back to the why are, why do some believe? Why do some not, or many not believe? Many not believe. Many, that's what it says. Uh, it, it says that uh, narrow is the, is the road and difficult. Verse 15, beware of false prophets who come disguised as harmless sheep but are really vicious wolves. You can identify them by their fruit, that is, by the way they act. Can you pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? How are you living your life? How are you living your life? Are you, do you say, I'm a believer in Jesus Christ, but yet you do whatever you want? You act however you want, and, and you think oh, it's all okay? No, it's not. I mean, I, I, as I, I didn't finish this uh, statement earlier, but as I was at the funeral on Friday for Ray's grandson, and he asked us last Sunday, please pray for my family. There are, uh, some of his family members are, are struggling with addiction, others struggling with addiction, besides his, his grandson, TJ, who passed. And I'm sitting there in the chair by the podium, and I'm looking at all these folks at this funeral, and I'm thinking, God, they need you. They need you. And do you know, here, here, I just think this is beautiful. Here is Ray. He was sitting just a few feet from me in the front row with his daughter and son-in-law and his other daughter, and Ray's other daughter. And I thought, you know, here is this man who has invited me to speak Jesus to his family. I, I think there was about 40 people there. Those people heard about Jesus Friday afternoon. They heard about Jesus. I, I, can't, I can't play around with this, guys. I have to tell the truth. I have to be, you know, there's times I'm like, God, oh, God, no. Oh, Jesus, please just let me, let me water this down a little bit. <laughs> you know, just, you know, I want to, you know, you, you're, you know, I'm talking temptation. We want to look better. We want to feel better. We don't want condemnation. We don't want rejection. We don't want people... You know, sometimes people walk, I just saw this really cool video last night, I didn't listen to the, I just was watching it, and this guy was talking about why non-Christians, unbelievers, try to stay away from you. Has anybody ever experienced that? You know, they, they see you, and you know they saw you, but they walk away from you. You know, they're like, they, they stay, they say, oh, my God, there's Tom Underwood, I got to walk this way, because I don't want him, I don't want to talk to him, because he's going to, he's going to ask me, hey, how you doing? How you doing? How's it going? If you know me and I know you from where I know you and I know how you are and what you do, you know what how are, how are you doing means, right? You know what it means. What does it mean, Ron? Are you clean? Are you about to fall over the edge? Some people try to avoid that. Why do they try to avoid that? Shame. But I think Jesus, they, they, they know and feel Jesus in us. And that, oh, I don't, I don't want to answer, how are you doing? Because I'm dying inside. I'm dying. How many people do you know? How many people do we all know who are dying inside? And they desperately need God's help. And we just, we don't know what to do. We think they're avoiding us because they don't like us. You know what? Get over it. Maybe they don't like you, but they need you. They probably don't like you because of Jesus if you're displaying any kind of a godly life, any kind. But you can identify them by their fruit, that is, by the way they act. Can you pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Verse 17, a good tree produces good fruit and a bad tree produces bad fruit. A good tree can't produce bad fruit and a bad tree can't produce good fruit. So every tree that does not produce good fruit is chopped down and thrown into the fire. 
how far are we going? Uh, 21, 20, uh, 20. Yes, just as you can identify a tree by its fruit, so you can identify people by their actions. Right? Are you still glad you came to church today? 21, not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. Do you know what I'm finding in my own life? The more I serve Jesus, and I'm not talking, this, this is serving Jesus, okay? This is serving Jesus. But do you know what serving Jesus is to me? I'm preaching, yes, and I love doing this, but do you know what serving Jesus is to me? When I was walking in that hospital on Friday morning at, se- at 8, 10, and thinking, okay, here goes. I'm about to meet up with this woman who just lost. She found her husband at 6 a.m. dead in the bathroom. I'm like, okay, I'm about to walk into something, and it's got to be Jesus that comes out of me. And I thought, do you know, that to me is serving Jesus. <laughs> I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to say. I didn't, I didn't know how that was going to go. But I, need, I knew it needed to be God and not Tom Underwood. Just to, to put my arm around her and to hug her and say, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. This didn't need to happen. God loves you. His life is gone, but God loves you. He loves you. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. Verse 24. I know I'm, I'm, I'm being a little long, but that's okay. 24. Anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise. Are you listening and following? Or are you listening and eh, just doing your own thing? Like a person who builds a house on the solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat down against that house, it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. You know, you can call it rock or you can call it steel, but Lord, make my heart strong to stand against the storms that come in this life, and they are going to come. 26, but anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish. Are you reading this? Are you reading this? Are you getting this? Doesn't obey it is foolish. Like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching. For he taught with real authority, quite unlike their teachers of religious law. Okay, I'm going to close with this. Romans 1.16. <clears throat> Are you ready? Are you equipped? You know, I do not know what this week is going to hold for me. I didn't know this past week. Um, Things came up this past week that I did not expect. I, I honestly, I'm a human being. I can't do what I do as a pastor without the Holy Spirit helping me. Because, quite frankly, my mind would bend and break, and I would be like, God, I can't do this anymore. But you know what? One more day. I only have to think about today. He's going to make everything come. I thought about this today. I have a gazillion things. We had a gazillion things we had to do this week, okay? And a lot of people make excuses about not being here on Sunday, or I can't come to Bible study. You know what? The Bible says as, as the day gets closer of Jesus' return, we need to be together even more. Even more. Why? Because we encourage one another. We help one another. We stop making excuses. Stop making excuses why you can't be fellowshipping with believers. It's about getting stronger. You need it. If you need somebody to tell you, you need it. I'm telling you, you need it. Stop making excuses. But I was thinking about this all week. I, I've had to make, everything has had to be very compartmentalized. Thursday we had this. Friday afternoon and then Friday morning, something new was put in there. So I have to do this, and I have to do this. And then uh, Saturday, we want to do this. And I wanted to make, I told Tammy, I said, I want to make soup. I made this really awesome soup last night, or we did. And it was so good. 
I'm like, I'm making soup. I'm doing it. We are going, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go to my house. I'm going to take my shoes off and my socks off, and I'm going to stand in front of the stove, and I'm going to make this really awesome soup. And I did, and it was good. But the Lord showed me something this morning that he taught me how to do what I'm doing when I worked at the bank for 28 years. God used my time at the bank to show me how to do this, to do everything by, by compartments so that my brain wouldn't overload and I could get everything done. Don't, don't discount what God has brought you through to get you here because, or I'm sorry, not what God brought you through, what God allowed you to go through to get you here. Be ready, just a second. And this right here, I'm not ashamed of the good news about Christ. It's the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes, the Jew first and also the Gentile. Don't be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. What you have and what you know is going to change somebody's life. I believe it. I stand in it. I've spoken thousands and thousands and thousands of words to people. And you think, God, does any of this ever touch anybody's life? And yes, you see this person beginning to change. And you see this person beginning to change. It's not me. It's God. He puts something in us that, that allows others to change. It's reproductive. The word of God is reproductive. That's why the devil wants you to keep your mouth shut. Don't say what you want to say. Say what God says. And that's, that's what it means to be not ashamed of the good news about Christ. And if you're not enthusiastic about it and you don't know it because you're never in fellowship and you're never participating or you're, well, I've got, well, I got to do this or I got to do that or whatever. Yeah, I'm saying sacrifice a little bit. Not for us, for yourself. You need this for you. You say, well, you know, Pastor Tom just needs to see me. Well, I love to see you. I love to see you. But this is more about you because you don't know what's coming tomorrow. You just don't. I listen to the Word of God on my phone every single morning almost, except for Saturday and Sunday. Every single morning, I'm, I'm reading devotions. I am praying. I'm talking to God all throughout the day. I am turning over issues and problems. He brings people to my heart and to my mind to pray for over and over and over and over again all day long. I'm trying to walk with him. And some people think, oh, well, this is a very compartmental thing. No, it's not. It's all day long. All day, all day, all day. And you know what? You might be struggling with your life in Christ, and I don't, even, I don't know how to do this. How am I going to say something? Well, when you begin to talk about Jesus, you'll begin to live Jesus. Trust me. Well, I'm going to wait until I'm li living really right. No, get in the Word, start reading it, start fellowshipping, and start speaking it out. Start praying for people. Somebody, you see somebody in distress and you say, uh, oh, they, they probably need prayer. No, go up to them and say, hey, can I pray for you? You look like you're having a bad day. They might say, no, just leave me alone. Okay, okay, well, just wanted to offer. You'll be surprised how many people will say, yeah, please pray for me. And don't you, don't you walk away from them and say, okay, well, I'll pray for you. No, you do it right there. Well, I'm going to pray. Put your, don't, you don't have to touch your hand, but may I, may I put my hand on your shoulder? Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for the things that this man is dealing with, and I speak life over him. I pray, God, that you would reveal your word to him and the power of your Holy Spirit that wants to change everything about everything that he does and thinks and, and says in the name of Jesus. Whatever. God will give you the words. I'm telling you, don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So, um... Stand on your feet. I'm not going to take any more comments right now. Stand on your feet. I just want to do this. Um, uh, Denise, do we need another quick meeting for everyone volunteering tomorrow, or are you good? We're good? Okay. If Listen, if um, Denise is heading up our Monday night meals for CR. If you have not volunteered and want to volunteer, she has broken this down so you can decide. 
you can come for this or this or this. You don't have to do the whole thing, that we're not doing that. You, it's very compartmentalized. You can just do one little thing. Well, I'm going to help tear down. I'm going to help set up. I'm going to help cook. I'm going to help do this. But if you would like to be on that list and to help Monday nights with CR, uh, CR dinners, we definitely think it's a worthwhile thing. Yes, ma'am. Oh, Ron. Ron. Come here, Ron, so people can see you. Stand up here, Ron. Because you weren't here for announcements. I don't know what that was all about, but get up here. I'm just kidding. So this is Ron. He needs a couple of very strong people to help him. We're, we're set, I've already given uh, Keith here uh, the lowdown on what we're doing. But uh, five tables and 50 chairs uh, will be set up in the what we call the children's hall. And that's where we're going to have tonight's meeting with the ladies, um, tomorrow's dinner for the Swain family, and tomorrow night's dinner for CR. So if you want to help um, see Ron, uh, we want to go out in the foyer when this is over, and um, you, he'll, Keith will show Ron and all of you what to do. And we're going to need that every Sunday after church, by the way, because we're setting up tables for Monday night after church on Sunday. So we've got the manpower and the help. All right? Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word today. Lord, there are people in this place who've been struggling with their relationship with you. They, they've, they've not been uh, truthful with you, Lord. They've not been where they should be. Father, there are people here who are struggling to give more. They think they've, they're giving enough. They're struggling with selfishness. Lord, there are people here who give and give and give and give and give, and they need to take a minute to rest there are people here that have not been reading the word, who have not been um, uh, praying on a daily basis. God, I pray that you convict them by the Holy Spirit that they need to read. Even if they don't understand, put it before your face. Put it before your face if you don't understand. God will give you the, give you the understanding. And Lord, I just pray that you transform us as a church, as a fellowship, as a believing body that we will get better because, Lord, this week is a testament of folks that we know. There's probably other folks I don't even know about that have had deaths this week. Lord, um, we, need to, we need to get the word out. Jesus is Lord. And, Father, I pray that you help us to have boldness like we've never had before, that you teach us and guide us and lead us and help us to be the men and women of, of the Most High God, soldiers, truly soldiers in the army of God, ready at every moment to do what you've called us to do. Father, we thank you for your life and your love in us, and we just pray for your anointing as we walk out these doors in Jesus' name. So, um, Bill and uh, Penny, would you come up here? And uh, Daryl and Sherry, I'm going to, hey, Ron, would you do me a favor? Would you move that over there? Before you leave, I'm, we're going to set up for prayer here, and if you need prayer for healing, if you've been struggling with sin, if you want to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit, I want you to come up here and pray with one of these four people. They have oil to anoint you, and they know how to pray, and they will pray for you to receive whatever it is that's, that you need in your life. God bless you. We love you. Pray for CR tomorrow night. It's going to be awesome. God bless you as you go.